Hey there, I'm Chris Campbell, host of the International Arbitration and Business Podcast, Tales of the Tribunal. I'm here today on behalf of a fantastic organization, the Bali International Arbitration and Mediation Center, otherwise known as the BIAMC, to talk with you about my career advice, the tip that I have to help you advance in your career. So aside from being a podcaster, what some of you may not know about me is that I'm also a visiting counsel at Baker Hughes in Florence, Italy. I handle a wide range of international, commercial, um, and other mediation, arbitration, all sorts of ADR disputes. So this series that the BIAMC is putting on is to impart career knowledge, things that could be employed in order to make someone's advice, someone's career more effective. So what do I want to talk about? I want to talk about something very critical called time management. That is, I want to teach you how to be a time lord, a master of time. Because as we will see um, through talking through this today, and as you might just appreciate, managing time is of critical importance. Prioritizing, knowing how to use your time the most effective, all those things only become more important as your career progresses. And oftentimes people just kind of go from fire to fire hoping that they will figure it out. And so the first thing that I wanna teach you is we all have the same 24 hours in a day. Think about the most important, the most uh, successful person that you might look up to and consider that all the things that they have to do, you know, whether that's a sports figure or a professional figure or someone else, they do it in the same 24 hours that you have every single day. So is it just that they have found an extra hour in the day, an extra day of the week? How are they managing to be so effective? I will tell you, most times it's because they have a process and a matter and a system, so to speak, of how to manage their time. So today's video will focus on that, how to become a time lord. So then, how do we frame this conversation about how to use your time more efficiently and more effectively? Well, I'm going to teach you three things today. First, prioritization, two, mental sprinting, and three, rest. So uh, in my spare time and when I'm resting, ever since middle school, I used to like to play this game called StarCraft and StarCraft II. For those of you that are not familiar, it's a game about building up an environment, using your resources to uh, build up a team to go defeat your enemies. So how do you do that? You have to be able to manage and juggle a number of activities all at the same time resource management, moving your units around the field, finding where your opponents are and knocking them out of the game. All things that rise and fall in levels of importance and prominence and what you need to be doing right then at the moment. So if you wanna be a good StarCraft player or you want to succeed in your career, you need to understand what are the things that I have to do most immediately in order to continue forward in the things that I need to do and to keep something bad from happening. So the way that we'll talk about this is by using a technique that I like to call workflow optimization or tiered to-do list. What, what that will allow you to do is something very fundamental and very simple. And that is you, instead of life or an alien conspiracy, dictating the terms and the timing by which you do things. Imagine the ability to say, yes, you've got a lot of things to do, but you're the one that determines how quickly you need to do it at what speed and in what order. So that's what we're gonna talk about next. Okay, and I hear you, trust me, I get it. You're thinking, did Chris just say we're just gonna teach us how to do a to-do list? I mean, everyone knows how to make a to-do list. All you need is a pen and a piece of paper. So, yes, almost, but notice I used the word tiered to-do list. What that means is a slightly different method of, of making a very generic to-do to -do list that you probably learned how to make when you were in school. So as we'll describe here and as I'll explain as we go along, what I'm going to recommend is breaking your to-do your to -do list up as follows. As you can see, workflow. So you break it into four categories. Emergency, very important, important, and somewhat important. So the reason why we think about it in those ways, and let me explain what those categories mean, is that emergency things are things that absolutely cannot wait, that if you don't do these things, you know, um, you're gonna miss a deadline, your boss will be upset with you, something bad will happen. Okay, emergency, that's understood. Very important things are things that are still pretty urgent, things that you need to, to, to get done that, that, you know, need to happen in the imminent future, but it can maybe be delayed just a little bit. Certainly can um, maybe wait till later in the day or maybe even tomorrow. Important things are things that, yes, they're, you know, certainly on your radar, you're thinking about them, 
but there's no harm in delaying them at all, you know, maybe even a couple of days or something like that. They're certainly not as important as the first two categories of things. And finally, we have somewhat important. Now, somewhat important things are things that are, you know, you want to get to eventually, they'd be nice to do, but they're just not um, as high as any of the other three categories, and nothing will be harmed by letting them wait a little bit longer. So one important limiter that you want to put on using that approach is that you want to provide, let's say, five spaces in each category. That prevents you from being overwhelmed and putting everything as an emergency, right? It allows you to say, okay, you know, these five things I've got to do. And so the secret is, once you knock off one of those things in the five spots that you have in emergency, something from very important moves up and so on and so forth. And everything goes up from a lower tier up one space every time you knock something out. What that allows you to do is to have a very organized, methodical, and specific way in which you move along the different things on your list. So one thing that you want to also make sure of is that in order to make the list and figure out what's important to you is to put a lot of th time and thought into what it is exactly that you want to accomplish over what time period, and then you start melding that into your list. Oftentimes what I will do is I'll have two sheets of paper, ooh, and I will jot down all of the things that I need to do in a given amount of time, and then I will take out my tiered list and merge those things into there. If there's something that doesn't fit neatly into any of those four categories, then you can say, okay, it's safe to say that this can wait for a little bit. You keep it somewhere and come back to it once you've checked off all of the things on your list. I'd be careful not to, to, to say that you have to get all that done in a single day or you know, by converse. It may be diff too difficult to even say as far as a month. You might want to just start using this method for just a week. And then you can apply it longer and you can add more items underneath. Sometimes, me personally, I don't like to make um, any category more than 10 items because I think that just gets too unwieldy. But that is the next step that you can, that is the first step that you can use in uh, managing your time is having this sort of organized tiered list. And again, and importantly, what it allows you to do is to you are now the one in control of dictating the timing in which you do things. You know, you've got that important deadline, you've got that thing that cannot wait from your boss. Well, that goes under emergency and everything else can kind of shift accordingly. So the second thing that I wanted to talk about and the second thing that I mentioned, mental sprinting. What does that sound like? I mean, do you need to warm up? Do you need to stretch in order to do that? No, it's not actually anything uh, physically active, but it's again, a way of actually moving through those things on your list. So especially in our field, a lot of times you might have you know, a large assignment or a large pro project, a memo, a, a brief, a submission, something that you need to work your way through. Well, instead of saying, oh my gosh, I've got, you know, a day or a couple of weeks to get through all of this, that can be something that is hard to organize. So instead, what I recommend is a style, what I call mental sprinting or the Pomodoro technique. It's what I used to study for the bar exam. I still use it for writing briefs and submissions to this day. And it's a way of effectively chopping up those things. So what is it? The Pomodoro technique or mental sprinting is a means of working on something specifically for a certain amount of time, stopping, and then continuing your work and doing that vice versa in order to, to, to be in a healthy rhythm or schedule that you'd like. What I mean is that uh, we specifically do this. You, one, find a, find a task that you want to do, something from your list. Then you set up a work area where you're going to work. You have everything that you need. You don't need to go to another part of the house. You know, we're all working from home these days or, you know, or go to another, another room, go anywhere in order to do something where you can do it in one spot. Two, you set it up in such a way that, you know, you turn off your phone, you put it on do not disturb, something like that in order to, to make sure that no one can really, you know, disturb you during that time period. And then, and this is the, the tricky part, is you set a timer for 30 minutes. Now for that 30 minutes, nothing else in the world matters. Again, nothing in the world matters during that next, that 30 minute period that you're going to work. And you focus on it. I mean, if you get a, you know, you know short of, you know, someone needing to go to the hospital or, you know, um, some, something that just cannot, in no way can wait, you know, you really want to zone everything else out mentally and focus on the task at hand for 30 minutes, specifically 30 minutes. Once the timer goes off for that 30 minutes, you then take a five minute break. What that will allow you to do is to just rest your mind, to take a break for a second, to, if you needed to respond to a couple of text messages, if you want to do whatever you want, for those five minutes, you're allowed to do. Um, you know, 30 minutes is sort of a short enough time that there's typically not anything that would happen in that time frame that you cannot do. And for those of you that have billable hours, it's a very neat way to sort of organize your, your time that way. So you, you take your five minute break and then guess what? After that break, you do it again, another 30 minutes, 
right at it. You know, um, you know, during your break, it's a good time. If there is something that you have to absolutely stop working for, you can do that. But it's short enough time that, you know, you don't want to do too much. You can kind of just, you know, take a break, take a breath and get back into it. And so you go like that back and forth for about four or five cycles. I really don't recommend doing more than that at a time because at that point, you've spent about two, two and a half hours working and your mind will need a longer break. You know, what you tend to find using this technique is that you tend to be much more efficient because your mind can very easily say, okay, this is a specific task, something I need to write, something I'm researching, and I can neatly focus for that 30 minutes and like put a lot of mental energy into it. And what you'll find after you get more comfortable with it is that your mind focuses and you are able to mentally sprint towards the task at hand. And, um, and once you start using it, you'll notice that uh, your friends and your colleagues will, will notice if you're working in that style and they'll, they'll, they'll try and wait until your, your cycle is over. So after you've done that cycle about four or five times, you take what's called a longer break, um, you know, something that's maybe two hours, no more than three or four. And you get back into it and you do that. And um, you know, let's say you're using it at work, for example, or in this working home, working from home scheme that we're currently in. So you do that first thing in the morning, um, you know, you put two and a half hours in, um, you take an hour, hour and a half break, uh, maybe two if you're taking a long lunch, and then um, you get back into it. And if you do that, you will have put five solid hours in of work, um, you know, over the course of about a seven hour period. And if you need to put more time in after that, you can definitely do that, you know, into your, to your evening or, you know, however you need to do it. But at least you can know confidently that you will put solid quality hours into that time. So, you know, that, that, the Pomodoro technique, mental sprinting, is something that, you know, is kind of the second step after you've designed your workflow like we talked about in step one. And two, um, you know, mental sprinting allows you to kind of just really knock those things out in a very aggressive and very specific fashion. So, and there's even an app for it. It's called, I think, just the Pomodoro app. And it has a, a built-in timer and it kind of measures your time on and off and you can measure productivity and all of those sorts of things. It's kind of fun. Nerdy, but fun. So the third and final thing that we're going to talk about, it may not sound like it is something so much time related or is just than it is just a good habit, and that's rest. What you have to do, and please, if you hear nothing else that I say, please remember as you're looking for techniques to help you master your time and your efficiency, you must take time to rest. People too often, especially as you start employing these techniques that I'm describing to you or whatever works best for you, oftentimes will try to discount the value of rest, you know, to say, ah, I can be the most productive if I sleep six hours and I just work the entire rest of the time, even through meals and sink and everything like that. No, I, I warn you that, you know, your mind, just like everything else in your body, is a muscle and it needs to be uh, used uh, responsibly and efficiently. If you're not taking that time to rest, and I, I mean, even in that list that I've given you, you should plan some time to rest. Because what you'll find is that in taking that time, your mind will restore itself. You'll consider things that you didn't think about and, um, and, and do all of those sorts of important things. And if you don't, then you'll, you'll start to be a little bit unfocused. Even the techniques that I'm teaching you now won't be as effective because you'll spend 15 of your 30 minutes trying to focus on the task at hand. And it's just it's an important thing to do. So make sure that you are resting as well. In any case, I hope those tips have been helpful to you. I know that they certainly have been a critical uh, component and aspect and tool in my uh, kit of things that I use to, to organize my thoughts, organize my, my, my working patterns and habits. What I would recommend is that as you start to practice and implement those things, don't say that it, or say or think that it must be something that's rigidly implemented. Understand that it'll take some time to understand those things and you need to figure out what works for you. Even if you don't use any of the tips that we've talked about today, Figure out a way that you can operate in a more process-oriented and more methodical way in working through your time. We all have many things to do, and unfortunately, we all have only 24 hours in a day. In any case, I appreciate the Bali International Arbitration and Mediation Center for giving me this time to talk with all of you. If I can be of help, for you, help to you, please feel free to get in contact uh, via the LinkedIn page. That is Tales of the Tribunal at LinkedIn, and feel free to drop me a message. I'd love to talk with you. And now, all of you, you've heard my tip. I hope, that, again, that it's been helpful and you are now a master of time. See you around.